Hello, my name is Shelly Sanchez Terrell, and today I am answering questions about personal learning networks for the students taking the EDUC 190 Computer in the Education course at the University of Philippines. I'm glad to be with you today. The first question is how can personal learning networks help students and teachers, and can anyone else benefit from them? First of all, I would like to point out that Personal learning networks are often called PLNs for short, so I'll be using that throughout the conversation. I, they're also often called professional learning networks, and my favorite that I've coined is passionate learning networks. And there's a good reason for that, and it goes into why it benefits teachers and students. When I was in business and taking business courses, one of the things that I learned from some of the best business um, entrepreneurs out there was that you should always stay in the top of your field. You should always have information about your field and you should always know your business. And one of the ways that people would do that was through trade journals and this was before the internet. So as the internet came about, then we had information very, very quick and, and we could get some really great information as well. And that's what a personal learning network is. A PLN is consists of all the people that you learn from online and and even sometimes you'll see them offline but a lot of times they have experience like years and years of experience and so you learn about your field and you're always immersed in a group of professionals that deal with same kind of issues that come up every day in your field and if you really love your field and you really love what you're doing then I think it's always great to be able to consume information about it because you'll always know the latest trends you'll always know what's happening and that'll always make you ahead of the game and so that's how personal learning networks or PLNs can really benefit students and teachers because you're constantly in the state of learning and you learn from people from all over the world and you have choice you get to choose whether it's going to be for from P authors, guest speakers, keynotes. And the great thing about online learning and social networks where you get to meet the people and learn from them is that you get to choose the way you want to and who you want to learn from. So for example, if you're a scientist um, and or a science teacher and you're teaching your student science and it's astronomy, well you can have your students Skype with actual astronauts or they can follow the tweets of the astronauts and that's coming from the word of their mouth. And that's so much more powerful than opening a book and having your students read about the astronauts. What are the advantages of using PLNs? Well, I talked about some of them before. It's just like right there and right then. But some of the advantages is it's a huge support network. And it's 24-7. It's people from all around the world. I can tell you that there have been numerous times that I can't even count when I've been tweeting and I'll tweet a question that just comes to me right then and there and I need the answer then. And that's the thing about teaching is that you'll come across certain types of situations or problems and you'll need answers then and there. Sometimes you'll just need a little bit of a support network. You'll need someone to, to pump you up and to just give you that nugget for the day to, to get you through the day and through the lesson. And a lot of times, especially when you're integrating technology in lessons, you'll need to have some kind of... Um, support network especially because a lot of hiccups come up you know so um uh, teachers having a personal a pln you'll be able to just be able to do that instantly there are a lot of times when i've tweeted and i get 10 responses in two minutes or 20 or 30 or i mean and the list goes on and on and on people are very very helpful on various different networks the other really big benefit and advantage of using PLNs is because you get to learn in different types of way as well. It suits you. You can go in a webinar format. You can learn from Skype like this, like through videos. And um, there are so many different types of ways that you can really learn. You can listen to a podcast. Many times when I'm working, I'll listen to a podcast from an expert in the field, and it'll really help me out uh, with studying and things like that. A lot of times we learn about theory in our education uh, teacher training classes and certification classes but rarely do we get to see a real picture a real raw picture of what it is to implement 
this type of theory or instructional method inside our teaching area. And as we all know, as soon as we step inside the classroom, you're going to come across these problems. You're going to have things such as uh, students who misbehave or students who are just not motivated or parents that yell at you or it just some the interactive whiteboard just doesn't work or you don't know what to do with it. So all of these problems and all these situations, your PLN can help with. So where can one create his or her own personal learning network? One of the ways is you can get on social networks, and there's a various uh, social networks that educators are participating on. According to LinkedIn, there's about nearly 1 million educators on LinkedIn. So that means that there's 1 million nearly 1 million educators out there who are really using social networks for professional development. Um, for professional development and learning from their PLN. So there are other places that you can go to that I recommend. I recommend Facebook. It's the largest social network in the world. So if you're already on there, you don't have to register for anything else. Just uh, find those groups on Facebook. You can go and search for EdChat, and you can join the EdChat group. And you can look for me, facebook.com, Shelly Terrell. And you can see the groups that I recommend as well. There's a lot of private teacher groups that I I have joined and I participate in and there are also really large Facebook pages out there where teachers are very active and according to your field you can find many teachers in a Facebook group or a Facebook page. The other social network is Twitter. I really love Twitter. It's like sending text messages. So for me, it's a daily kind of ritual but it's so easy to do. I just send a few tweets and I get lots of responses and it's very quick for me. Another place are educator communities. They used to be called NINGS. Well, they're still called NINGS, but now it's a paid front. But there are two particular NINGS that are very great for teachers. You can go to edupln.ning.com, and that's by Tom Whitby. And there are nearly 10,000 educators there. And they have private educator groups. They share videos. They share presentations. They have discussion forums. They share blog posts. And this is more for a really intense discussion or to share resources. You don't have a limit. In Twitter, you do have a limit. It's 140 characters, and that's it. So if you need that extra support, I would definitely recommend the EDUPL and Ning. Another one is Classroom20.com. And Classroom20 is by Steve Hargaden. And it has nearly 60,000 educators worldwide. So that's another great place to be able to collaborate and communicate. How relevant are PLNs in the digital age? They're very relevant. Uh, you're not going to be able to stay in up uh, to up to par in your field um, unless you're constantly getting information about your field, unless you're constantly interacting with a group of professionals. It, it's more than once a year and it's for any field. It's not just for teaching and educating, but if we are going to be that kind of model, if we're going to support and that I think is our end goal in education as a teacher. At the end of the year, if the best thing that you do is you get your t students to be motivated and, and really want to learn and and just so excited about learning then you pass on this this thirst and this hunger to be continuous learners and I think that this is the main goal of education unfortunately a lot of education systems around the world have really taken away that thirst for learning T students are bored they think that learning has to do with drilling and 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 they think it's just a tedious task and that's just very sad because then they don't want to learn anymore, they don't want to read anymore, they don't want to do math, but it can be exciting. And the only way that we can exemplify this is that we have to be models. We have to show that we're so excited about learning or that we're just immersed in learning all the time. And that's how a PLN really helps because the students see that you're constantly learning about your field. And so I think that's the greatest argument for PLNs and I think that's what makes it one of the greatest things in the digital age. But 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 just consistently, it's not a fad and it's not a trend. It's not going to go away. Teachers are going to learn from teachers online for a very, very long time. PLNs with traditional face-to-face -face lectures. Well, there's a lot of differences. Uh, well, right now you're watching me, so that's not as interactive. <laughs> but if we were doing this in a webinar format, then you'd be able to see a presentation that I might show or a video I might show, and then you might be able to 
have a chat with other educators from around the world or even from your class. So you can constantly have, first of all, like a back channel and you can ask questions and you can get engaged. There are a lot of things that, you know, I could ask you to write on an interactive whiteboard online or we could all collaborate on a Google Doc. So having a PLN, you get various different types of options. You don't have to just do the traditional method. You don't have to listen and sit in a lecture. You can actually do things while you're, and it's encouraged it's encouraged to uh, to to tweet and 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 to use a chat and to use a back channel that's very very uh, popular with different types of presenters and especially those who have a PLN are immersed in online learning and you get to choose you know if you're not particularly into video lectures then maybe you want to or it's not good for your bandwidth then maybe you want to see it as a podcast and you get to learn who would be the best person that you can learn from and in your subject as well. So I think it really just gives more choices and plus a lot of cognitive um, theory support that when we do, when we actually have these various methods that, that work with our learning styles and we apply and we talk about what's going on with other teachers while we are listening to presentations online, that this actually helps us to remember the information a lot better than if we were to just listen to a traditional lecture. Plus then you get to say, um, you get to add input. When you're chatting with other educators, you get to add your take on it. You get to grab your experiences and you get to put them with this new knowledge and then that makes you a better teacher. It makes it more personal for you. Do you think PLNs can replace the traditional learning environment? I think they, they should. Um, I, I think the traditional learning environment for a long time has really lacked a lot of ways of engaging students. Um, like I said, P, working with PLNs, you really learn how to engage your students. You really learn how to make it to where your students will thirst for that knowledge and 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 participate in different things like hands-on learning. A lot of teachers think that these are new things, but they're not. You know, the cognitive theory and social cognitive theory and um, modeling by Bandita and all of this, these are educational theories that were actually around for several, several, several decades. You know, this is in the 60s. You know, you learn about Paulo Freire and everything like that, that it should be a student-centered classroom. What happens is that teachers, they just, it's, in the classroom, um, a lot of schools were actually developed with the factory mode that they would train students so that way they can they could work in the factories and and so they took on this traditional method of, of teaching and so a lot of times we think that this is the way that it's always been but it actually hasn't theorists for a long time have said that we should have student-centered learning so I would think that um, that it, it, it should replace the traditional learning method because we need students to be able to take their knowledge, to have that autonomy, to really be able to lead their own learning because they need to be able to learn effectively and about what they're curious about and what they're passionate about way long after we are in the picture. I... Have you created your own PLN? Yes, I have a network of over thousands and thousands, uh, tens of thousands of educators worldwide that I interact with. And I have very fortunately been blessed with this incredible job where I get to see many of them um, in the last two, two or three years. I've been able to travel to several different countries. Um, about 19 actually and and, be, and 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 do online training as well so I've been able to meet a lot of teachers that way um, and do face-to-face -face training as well and the way that I developed this is that I first got into Twitter I had a blog and I started supporting different educational projects and just doing projects online in a collaborative effort so we have um, two online conferences that I've been able to help create with a team of other educators that are phenomenal worldwide and that's the reformsymposium.com that you saw and also the virtual round table um, conference uh, which was nominated for Nelton. Uh, another thing that we've been able to do is the 30 goals challenge for educators which nearly 8,000 educators have been involved with to accomplish 30 goals in a year that are related to education and it's a free book as well so you can go and check those out. Um, 
what do you think is the future of PLNs? Well, I believe the future depends on the technology. I, I think, you know, with different types of apps that are being developed so that we can connect faster on social networks. So now, you know, you can take your smartphone and, and that's one of my favorite things to do. I'm always with my smart devices, you know. Um, and so I'm always like um, a tweeting or Facebooking. And that's one of the great things is that when you wait in line, we spend so much of our lives waiting in line for things, waiting for a bus or waiting to get food or just waiting in general and public transportation, that we have that ability if we're connected to be able to to collaborate and, and send tweets or post on Facebook or uh, send uh, get on Skype even. So I think that as, as broadband continues to spread throughout countries and I think as, as the internet continues to um, to be available for all even in other countries and, and especially through mobile devices because most of the world does have mobile devices and I think as soon as schools start allowing mobile devices in schools then I really believe that uh, PLNs would just grow and that it will be kind of a part of our personal learning. Uh, PLNs will be just kind of another way that we learn and something that we kind of have to do to stay relevant and ahead in our fields. Um, thank you so much for having me today. I hope I answered all the questions. And if you have any more, you can find me at ShellyTerrell at gmail.com. Or you can Google TeacherRebootCamp.com and you can find various resources um, on integrating technology effectively in your classroom, um, including free ebooks. Uh, I have an ebook, Effective Mobile Learning, 50 tips and resources um, to help you with integrating a whole class or doing the bring your own device movement or anything like that and also my book the 30 goals challenge for educators which you can find online as well thank you so much for having me